welcome back to The Sims Medieval, where we are here with our bard, Rania Silverglee, who seems to be serenading the, um, the messenger pigeons that are in the little pigeon coop. And I have no idea why she's doing that, because she's not actually our current focus for the quest that we are tending to. But let's just take just a moment to kind of sit back and listen to this wondrous sound. The fountain splashing in the background. Bird song. The cooing of the pigeons. Her lute being played. <sighs> it's just beautiful, you guys. It just really set the scene of being here in Moss Stone Kingdom. Uh, and she was actually just standing here at the church. And I mean, like, you could hear the fountain, the pigeons, everything. I fell even more in love with our beautiful moss stone with all of this happening. Ah, so now that we are back, uh, we're actually going to carry on with Blacksmith Kirspin, who has gone ahead and he, oh, God, just stared at the wall there, Kirspin, who has gone ahead and he's going to turn immediately right around. Well, I guess actually let's have him stock with coal and get ready to work on that broken pirate boat that he needs to tend to, since apparently the day's orders of making lots of different metals has come in. Uh, let's see, and where is the pirate boat? The pirate boat. Row, row. Aha, the repaired rowboat. So row, row your pirate boat. And let's go ahead and start taking care of that. Uh, but Kirspin actually just came back from going into the forest while the rest of the kingdom is currently celebrating the royal wedding feast and the fact that Moss Stone has married into an alliance with the elves of Effenmont and that might bode very well for the future. And we've even had the birth of our heir, Prince Thornley. We have other concerns at the peripheries. Some people want to celebrate, and some people want to focus on making sure that everything will be as safe as possible. And that is what Kirspin wants to do. Also, I need to keep an eye. Oh, I gotta remember how to do this just right. I don't think I need to worry about, yeah, the heat's just right. Stock with coal. Normally I can kind of mess with the forge. Rania, did you follow me? No, it's good man Moses. He took out his loot. Everybody is just in a good mood, as you can see. There is celebration, and everyone is quite happy to go ahead and celebrate the fact that the queen is married, the prince is born, Moss Stone has an heir, alliances are being made, food is being cooked, but some people need to be aware and wary that trouble could be on the horizon. Oh, good face. Good face for that. Kirspin, I'm very proud of you. And that's where Kirspin is. So he was talking to the hunters who were worried that something mysterious is going wrong in the forest. And we actually need to try to craft a chinchilla trap, which sounds amazing. After a lot of hard work, Blacksmith Kirspin successfully forged a normal quality repaired rowboat. So we will re uh, give that man the rowboat. Let's take care of that, because Kirspin's the kind of guy who would take care of all of the main orders before working on something on the side for his own projects. And then we need to do something about these killer chinchilla who are hiding in the forest. And we'll start by crafting a cage to trap them. Also, what a cool pirate! Holy cow! <gasps> it's a fight between the pirates! Man, I love what, like how aggressive all of the Sims in Sims Medieval are because they're always constantly starting duels and fights. They're just endlessly entertaining. All right, and also we will go ahead and pay our taxes because that is definitely something. Oh, we have high taxes because the queen currently is demanding high taxes. But we're going to go ahead and pay our taxes because that is also something that Kirspin would do. He is quite the loner though, and he is very unhappy to be around this many people. So let's get this work done while we can. And then let's pop over. Man, he has a lot of money. Holy cow. And let's see if we can actually forge the chinchilla trap. So what do I need for the chinchilla trap? I need cheese. That is hilarious. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so we need to get some cheese for the chinchilla trap, but that's all right. Let's come see what we actually have available at the market stall. I don't think he, well, you know what? I always feel like it's rude not to communicate with the people in the village. So he'll at least do just a very gruff, how fair are they? While he tries to go ahead and just do his shopping with the merchant. 
Hello, little chicken. Oh, I love you as well. Don't worry, I'm not gonna let the chinchilla get you. Maybe if we, we leave these overgrown chinchilla alone, we might actually end up, unfortunately, having them eat our chickens. And that would be inexcusable. All right, good. So let's buy some good at the market stall. Now that we said our polite hello to shopkeeper Lizetti, another hero that we've had hardly any time to work with. Kirsten is so, so much a loner and so shy. He is just kind of like waiting his turn. Oh, Huntswoman Felicia. Maybe she knows something about what's going on with the chinchillas as well. And maybe we can find something. Oh, some health solve. Okay, we're going to casually grab a couple of those just on the down low because we did get attack attacked by chinchillas. And even though he doesn't want to admit it, I feel like Kirspin wouldn't turn down uh, putting on a little bit of the cream to heal it. He didn't want to make a big fuss about it, but if the opportunity presented itself, it would be a good idea to have some of that health solve. We'll buy all of it because what if, the you know, his son gets bitten. Um, we'll take care of that. We could give... We'll grab this Lord Leaf to give to our brother-in-law the wizard because lord leaf is hard to get our hands on and i like the idea that uh kirspin actually has hmm kirspin has a bit of a relationship with him and kirspin's wife med midwife tegwin probably will take the lord leaf because she is a hedge witch so we'll gather it for her more than anything and then oh he loves onions i just remembered kirspin really loves eating onions we'll get a little bit of barley and then a red-tailed hawk. The red-tailed hawk is a master of soaring on air currents with slow, deliberate wing beats. Some believe the distinctive red tail feathers hold mystical energy. <gasps> Let's grab that red-tailed hawk and then we'll give Kirspin the red-tailed hawk as his new quote-unquote pet when we manage to go ahead and catch the chinchilla. And we'll say that the red-tailed hawk was watching and we brought it back from the forest. I love that idea. Oh, jeez! What the heck? We just did something big! You just completed Money Matters for 10 points towards your Watcher Achievement level. So we earned 2,500 gold at the market stall. Oh my gosh! I didn't know that those achievements could do those things. We just unlocked, like, the Queen's Summer Wear and the Mistress of the Nightgown and Sir Studley's Armor. And we just unlocked all of these, like, statues. You can unlock things? Inner Demon's Morality Rug? We just unlocked some new outfits for the queen, some jester's outfits for the bard, some new statues of the four peers. I didn't even know that was a thing we could do. What? Okay, hang on. That has got me flabbergasted. So all oh, that improved our watcher level somehow because we completed some of these achievements. <gasps> Oh, because we did the Money Matters achievement and let's have takeout and that pushed our watcher level up. So as you fill this out, you can unlock new things. All these years, I didn't know that. Holy cow. No wonder a lot of these you have to play multiple kingdoms in order to do. That is really funny. So I don't think we'll be able to do this. Like, you know, get. Like, can you imagine getting 2,500 RP? There's only like a about 90 quests i think so you'd have to play a lot of quests over and over again but that's really fine okay what can we do as kirspin even though we might not be able to do much let's see cool yeah we'll work on we'll work on that when we can kirspin i think all of your stuff was at the top yeah all of his stuff was at the top so dressed for success, craft 50 pieces of armor. If I had a hammer, complete 30 quests with the blacksmith. Uh, and darkness unleashed, craft a legendary doom sword. What? All right, we'll keep that in mind. I don't think that's gonna happen again, but I think that we're just gonna say that represents even more of the fame of Moss Stone Kingdom growing under the careful watch of our level 15 or 16 monarch now. Um, our wonderful, wonderful, like, briar rose. This is amazing. Also, we didn't get any cheese, so now we need to go to the village shops, which is really going to be an unhappy day for Kirspin, because he likes to be solitary. Let's also use this solve to cure some of these moderate bites that we got. There we go. Did that help? Minor bite. So now it's minor bite, and we can't use that again. And carefree! Who needs to be burdened with the serious watcher stuff anyway? 
<laughs> I guess everyone's talking about like the Watcher and the Patarian Monastery, and he's just like, eh, not for me. All right, let's send. Wow, ah, Kirspin, jeez. We'll send Kirspin off. I think he would like talking with the guards, if just to ask them how their armor's holding up and making sure that like their swords are sharpened properly, so that we don't have to worry. What's this? This is Pharos. Are there any rare ores over here? Who's this? Squire Caspin. Why are you glowing, child? He seems to be enchanted with something, I think. And then what's this? We've got Amadite over here. A rich mineral deposit. That sounds suspicious. We might collect that on our way home. It's been so long since I've worked with these. Oh, Nightshade. Oh, good. We're in town. All right, there's Eagle Wood. There's a Gear Falcon. I think that if I was going to get a bird for Kierspin, it would be the red-tailed hawk. That is actually a very suiting one for him. His wife is a hedge witch. The red-tailed hawk, I think, is one of the most widespread species in the world, if I remember correctly, for hawks, which is a really cool random fact. I need to double check that, but I'm pretty sure the red-tailed hawk... No, 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 they're not the most widespread. They have one of the most recorded diverse diets of hawks in the world. How I know that is because of all the end slates that I tend to put with the little science facts on the end of a lot of our videos, because we are a pixel biologist after all. And I remember I was doing some reading about bird diets, and somehow or another it got me on the path to reading about how the red-tailed hawk is one of the species of hawk that has been observed eating the widest variety of prey types in the wild. Like, from big or small, if they can swallow it, then the red-tailed hawk is probably going to do it. Versus other bird species where they might try to pick at certain extra prey if they stumble on it, but for the most part, they, stin they tend to stick to a certain type, like birds or fish or mice that make up the bulk of their diet. And a red-tailed hawk is basically just an extreme opportunistic hunter for hawks. Uh, so anyway, there's a little segue into my pixel biology random animal facts that I have. <laughs> not in animal so I think, I'm not saying Kirspin has a diverse diet, but I am saying red tail hawks also have, because they have that adaptable diet, a very wide range they can be found in, but usually always forest and mixed urban environments. And that's, you know, that makes him a little common. And that kind of fits Kirspin. He's a little common, but he's got an edge to him. All right, we're going to, you know what, and he's probably got a bit of an appetite too. And he has a, a son and hopefully soon a growing family. We'll buy a bunch of cheese so we can just have a ton of cheese to cook with. Um, maybe a couple apples for his wife to poison, since she's, uh, since she's a bit of a witch, quite literally. And then some wheat, so we can cook something yummy. And then let's go ahead, and we're going to, let's see, manual of blacksmithing the Watcher's Blade. Now that might be kind of interesting. <gasps> Ooh, the Tooth of Jacob, that sounds really cool. I want the Tooth of Jacob. So we're, he's actually doing some good shopping today. It's been a long time since we played him, so we've got plenty of money. Um, more onions, which we don't really need. He's he's not really... I don't think... He probably abstains from any of the fruit juice, even though it's non-alcoholic fruit juice in our world. Just because. There's the red-tailed hawk, which we already got. Anything else? Uh, cheap hammer. We have a better hammer. Obsidian paddle. Okay, we're good. Yay! We have a couple new things that we might be able to craft once he gets a little time. <gasps> Manual of blacksmithing, sword of the chinchilla. What? Okay, so he stumbled on a, a bookshop that had all sorts of very, very interesting hidden secrets in it. And I think he wants to read about those hidden secrets uh, as soon as he comes back over here. Can I have him? There we go. That's so cool! Alright, let's bring him back. Like, sort of the chinchilla. Wait a second. So now we have Watcher's Blade, Tooth of Jacob, Dread Pike, and sort of the chinchilla. We're gonna have to go ahead and see. We stumbled upon this, this record of sort of the chinchilla out of the blue. Oh good, and he can actually access this. And we're gonna say that terrible trip that he took to town, and he hates going into town gave him a moment to be able to discover something useful. So we're going to hide out here for just a minute 
enjoying the nice day and the privacy of the forest. Plenty of electrum. And we're going to read the manual of blacksmithing Sword of the Chinchilla out here if we can. Excellent. He can read. He is a very well-educated man. He had to survive mostly based off of his wits for so long. And his backstory is that Blacksmith Kirspin was given a terrible curse that meant if he stayed in any one place for too long, it would actually cause the people around him to be horribly affected by that curse. The villages that he would try to stay in were just decimated by demons and other things that would pursue him. And when he was here, he was actually able to break that curse with the help of midwife Tegwin, which is why they make a good romantic pair. And really, which is why we should go find where Tegwin is. I really want to work on having more kids. And look at how happy he is to be like out in nature, digging rocks up. Oh, his spouse, where would I be without you? <gasps> He's thinking about his spouse. And we stumble upon some rare documents while we are in town, even though he hates going to town, that is going to teach us how to be able to make a sort of the, the like chinchilla. That's amazing. Also, I'm kind of tempted to sell this feast ale of recipes because I don't think he'd be into that. But maybe his wife actually wants him to learn some sort of special juice recipes to help her with whatever work she has as a hedge witch. Maybe like making, maybe they make like potions light. It's mostly ale, you know, non-alcoholic fruit juice ale. Cough, cough, of course. Uh, and yes, we've just unlocked the sword of the chinchilla recipe. What the heck? That's going to be so cool to see. All right, I don't think we need to keep that book then since we have the recipe, but let's make sure we can make that. Let's collect this and then let's go back and we're gonna see what the sword of the chinchilla and a chinchilla trap would take. This is really cool. And if I find Tegwin, where is she? Tegwin, like I wish you could summon them home. How fair the banter. But you just kind of have to, like, luck out. Because I love it, because it's a very living world. But- Oh! <gasps> Tegwin, you're home! Okay, quick, 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 quick! I know this is random, but it's really hard to get these guys home for a second. Alright, now that they're both home... Does she count as home yet? Tegwin? Hi! Yes! Gaze into her eyes. We haven't seen her all day. You really should probably leave now, Dame Constance, I'm just saying. Make room uh, private to owner's family for just a second, and we will unprivate it in a little bit. And then, hold still, Tegwin, hold still. A shy kiss while this woman is still in here. Passionate kiss. Even though he is thinking of the good of the kingdom and the terrifying chinchillas that are coming, could you people please leave? I'm just saying. We'll give our undying devotion. Ha ha! There we go. Get out of here. That's right. You guys get out of here. Finally, a moment's privacy. Now let's see if we manage to work on a, another member of the family. I know that seems a little odd. I love how they have to rush. They're like, quick before her son gets back. And while we have closed the shop and kicked all of these nosy, eavesdropping, like, busybodies, Milner Cohen and Dame Constance out. It's so nice to see that everybody is like moving around without the plague for once. Also, this is very awkward that because of the way the camera works in Sims Medieval, you know, I can't really get away from the woohoo. I'm just going to be a pigeon on the roof for a minute. Oh, I thought our son was coming back already. And I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> but all right, Kirspin, you only have so long because, oh, and he's got the little music box. You only have so long to think about this. Like, you've got a kid. There we go. I think woohoo almost always results in kids because it's, you know, the medieval era. A higher rate of woohoo to baby ratio, you could say. Um, though not always, but I that would be a very different kind of rabbit hole of explanations to go down on that I could speak with you guys about. Thanks in large part to the fact that I married a historian philosopher who's actually both a historian and a philosopher. Uh, having a blast. Kirsten's having so much fun, it's almost criminal. Oh, good. Well, wonderful. We'll have to just, like, cross our fingers and see if that results in anything. But all right, now that we have done all that, we can go ahead, we can make the room public again, and let us see, where's the sword of the... <gasps> 
Sword of the Chinchilla! A sword with weak magical properties. No one's really sure what it has to do with chinchillas. Scholars hypothesize that, like the chinchilla, it is light in weight, yet much more dangerous than meets the eye. Excellent! That's gonna be so cool. But all right, we're gonna get Kirspin, now that he and Tegwin have had a moment. We're going to get him to work on the chinchilla trap with cheese and crudium, and then maybe even craft a sword of the chinchilla just just in case. Sorry, I'm so excited about the potential baby. I got hiccups. Just in case we are able to go ahead and um, go ahead and, and do something with that sword next time. But all right, guys, thank you so much for joining me on this adventure. If you guys could, do please leave a like for the hope of Kirsten expanding his family tree. And if you would like to join us on this and literally thousands more adventures, do please consider subscribing. But most importantly, my friends, stay curious, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye!